The life of British singer-songwriter Ben Howard suddenly changed forever when his debut album rose to fame. Keep your head up, keep your heart strong. The most poppy song, Keep Your Head Up, played a big part in the Every Kingdom album going platinum. Ben quickly gained a large fan base, and his live gigs were suddenly filled with audience members screaming his name. Critics predicted Ben would follow in the footsteps of other British breakthroughs like Ed Sheeran, and certainly Ben could have kept making similar songs that made Every Kingdom so popular, except he didn't. You see, fame didn't make Ben happy. He began drinking more than he wanted to, and found himself overwhelmed with all the attention. So instead of choosing a safe route that would likely push him towards incredible fame, he drastically changed his sound. By doing this, he was aware that it would leave many of his original fans disappointed, Yet he chose authenticity above all else. Even when tragedy struck Ben's life, as we'll find out later, he stayed true to himself and never ran away from facing his adversities. Ben was born in 1987 in southwest London. His musical parents exposed him to artists like Nick Drake, John Martin, and Bob Dylan, all musicians who would influence his own musical style later on. It was no surprise when Ben became interested in writing and playing guitar at age 11. After college, Ben decided to study journalism. Of course, he would quit just six months prior to completion to focus full-time on his music. Um, I remember when I was thinking about dropping out of uni and quitting, I rang a friend of mine and she said, sounds pretty cliche and stuff, but she said that the most beautiful lives are the ones that take risks. And uh, I, that's when I quit, basically. I've always um, carried that with me. The decision to drop out of university gave Ben the opportunity to focus on releasing his debut album, Every Kingdom. Inspired by Bon Iver's album, For Emma Forever Ago, Ben wanted to capture the sound of instruments and vocals in the most organic way possible. Bon Iver achieved this by utilising the atmosphere of his father's old hunting cabin. Surrounded by trees, fields and solitude, Ben found himself a barn in the vast countryside of Devon. It was not big, but it was enough for the band to set up the recording equipment and get to work. Ooh, am I? Overall, the album is poetic and introspective, but not lacking in bursts of vibrant energy. It's no wonder many fans still consider Every Kingdom Ben Howard's best work to date. Yet, turning into a celebrity left Ben feeling anxious. Furthermore, heartbreak and depressive thoughts seemed to get a hold of him, which fueled the songwriting of his second album, I Forget Where We Were. Released in 2014, the album takes us on an intimate journey through his emotional state. In the song, End of the Affair, he captured his lovesickness as he yells out his confusion and pain after the end of a relationship. Contrary to the popular view of musicians becoming happy after fame, Ben presents himself as vulnerable, heartbroken and in search of meaning. I have never been so bored. Due to the dark nature of the album, it was never intended for the masses. Instead, it was Ben's way of processing his deepest pain. He didn't worry all too much about the success or fame it would bring him, and surely the new direction left some fans disappointed. Those who did find solace in the introspective themes, however, often became devoted fans. These fans have described being pulled through difficult times by having someone to relate to. So, while giving up on commercial success, the album has provided fans an emotional experience that most pop albums could never match. In 2014, the same year as the album's release, Ben's wounded heart would heal when he met fashion designer Agatha Lintott. They fell in love and Agatha left London behind to start a new life with Ben. Despite his busy touring schedule causing them to be on the road a lot, their commitment remained and they are now approaching their 10th anniversary. Ben's love for Agatha became so strong that he couldn't help but pour it into his music. It's so nice to be around you now. The peaceful track on Ben's 2018 album, Noonday Dream, suggests he has found immense calmness in his love life again. His great appreciation for Agatha can be considered a turning point in his musical career. This becomes even more evident in the 2021 album, Collections from the Whiteout where the opening track is arguably the most heartfelt song Ben has written. Every side of you I know is worth the keeping. Not only is Ben still enchanted by Agatha, throughout the album he sounds supremely carefree. What a day to go around Well, the sun came out and it was a YouTube comment under the lead single, What a Day, reads... 
a man without the weight of the world on his shoulders. And indeed, this is arguably the best way to describe Ben's career up to this point. He was never afraid to be different. He never followed trends or tried to fit in. He always chose to create music that he thought would make him grow as a person. Unfortunately, one year later, a tragic event nobody expected struck Ben's life. It's, it's my biggest fear is losing my memory. Yeah. I think once you lose your memory, you lose all sort of grounding. In March 2022, while he was sat in his garden, he suddenly found himself unable to think clearly and had a difficult time forming proper sentences. Over the span of an hour, Ben found himself becoming hypersensitive to light, the blowing of the wind and the rustle of the leaves, all while being unable to explain or express himself. When the same thing happened again about a month later, it became evident what was wrong. At 35 years of age, Ben had suffered two TIAs, also known as minor strokes. Hospital visits followed, which didn't bring many answers to the cause of what had happened. Significantly, however, Ben's memory was affected in a negative way. This raised some scary questions. How would this impact his day-to-day -day life? Would he still be able to write songs? In June of that same year, the latter became clear. Ben and his team entered their familiar recording studio in France to explore how his abilities had been impacted by what had happened. Despite difficulties, Ben found himself able to write songs, and a new album emerged. Instead of pretending to the outside world that nothing had changed, Ben used his struggle with words and memory to fuel the songwriting for his 2023 album, Is It? I make it up. In the interlude, Total Eclipse, Ben even offers the listener a glimpse into what he heard, felt and said during the tragic events. I was, I was thinking, well, <laughs> Once more, Ben Howard turned adversity into creative fuel, and against all expectations, Is It is arguably his most optimistic album to date. To quote Ben himself, I was often asked if the album would be heavily about death due to my TIAs, but that was never the intention. It's quite the opposite, and I'm happy about that. When Ben was faced with the question of how to proceed with life after being confronted with his mortality, he chose to embrace love. Throughout the entirety of the album, an admiration for life and the people close to him is found, which makes it no surprise to hear the name of Agatha come up in the song Days of Lantana. Agatha and I Looking back on the recovery process and the album which came forth from it, Ben would summarise the month spent in uncertainty with the following quote. Love conquered death. Can we let love conquer death in our own life? Can we look at our fears, flaws and misfortunes and be open about them to ourselves and the world? Despite this being a difficult process, it is a rewarding one, and perhaps why Ben writes his lyrics. Not to be famous, admired and rich, but to understand learn and heal, and perhaps help the rest of the world in doing the same.